Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode. My name is Dana, and our guest today is Mr. Scott Taylor. Hello, Scott. How are you? Dana, how are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Well, before we get started, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, a little about yourself, what you do, all that kind of good stuff. I am Scott Taylor, the data whisperer. I help calm data down in this crazy technology space. That's what we've got to do. I work with corporate enterprises and data and software brands to help them tell a better data story about why data management has such a strategic importance to their organization. Okay. Well, then let's get to it. And today we're going to talk about data management. Data what management. A surprise. <laughs> All right. So let's go. And what is your background in the data space besides being the data whisperer? Yeah. Big, you know, not, not a well-kept secret is I, I never actually worked with data. I'm not a data practitioner. I'm a storyteller by trade. So being in this space for, I don't know, almost 30 years, all I've done as I look back on my career is help people tell better stories about why their data management is so important. And I do it through a variety of different tactics. I mean, spoiler alert, I don't do a lot of whispering. You've got to be out there yelling, selling, and telling about the value of data management, especially in a space where other things get a whole lot more attention. But I do it through events where I either keynote or I'm a host, a podcast like this, webinars with brands, data shows with, with brands, as I like to call them. I do puppets, cartoons, white papers. But believe me, the puppets get a lot more engagement than the white papers. But you can probably boil my entire philosophy down to three words. Truth before meaning. You've got to determine the truth in data before you derive any meaning. I'm obviously on the truth team, hence the meaning of my truth hat here. Mm -hmm. But what I mean by that is really the foundational aspects of data management, data governance, data stewardship, identity resolution, unduplicating data, all that's all the things you need to do to curate and structure these foundational data elements. You have to do that first to determine the truth before you derive meaning out of the cooler, sexy stuff like data science, data literacy, analytics, business intelligence, ML, AI, all the fancy stuff that gets a disproportionate amount of attention. So boiling this down, again, it's not chicken or egg here. It is egg and omelet. If you don't have the truth in your data, you're not going to derive the meaning out of it that you expect. That's a very good point. And I never really thought about that, but that makes sense that that's where you need to start with all this stuff because so, there's so much manipulation that can happen out there nowadays and it just gets more and more and more every single day that it makes sense that you need to start with, you know, what is the truth of what you're doing here? Okay, so here's another question that a lot of people might not even really think is a big deal. So why is data management so important? It is where data starts. You already alluded to it. If you don't start correctly, you will not get to where you need to go. And data management over the years is kind of, some people think of it as kind of a clerical back office tactic. You know, that's the boring stuff here. And yeah, it's the hard work you have to do. Not that data science isn't hard work, but if you talk to any data scientist and you read about these articles that are published these days, they sort of glibly reference, we spend 80 to you know 90 to 120% of our time munging and wrangling data. That sounds like an awful lot of time spent in what I would consider data management before they get to do the fun stuff that they're actually hired for. I don't know a lot of jobs that can admit they do 60 to 80% of their time doing something that isn't that job. But think about it as the golden rule of data. Do unto your data as you would have it do unto you. What you put into data management is what you will get out of analytics, out of business intelligence, out of data science. So usually people think of it as, you know, G-I-G-O, garbage in, garbage out. But that kind of cliche hasn't really, doesn't drive any executive action. And that's part of my purpose in the data space is help drive action towards funding and supporting and engaging with the data management side of the business. Okay. Very, you're very passionate about it too, which is good. because we're sure I, I am. I get going. I, you got to get going in this space. It's, it's like I say, I don't do a lot of whispering. If you don't show the passion and show that you mm -hmm. care about it and the people yeah. I engage with, especially at the corporate enterprise level, they share the same passion that I do, but they also are really frustrated because people won't really listen to them. Mm -hmm. The stuff isn't cool, unfortunately. 
<laughs> well, we got to make it cool. If you know cybersecurity, some people may say, well, that's not really cool. But, you know, it is it is kind of cool. I mean, the stories, I love the stories because the stories are what people get people to pay attention because, like, you know, people remember a story and they're like, wow, remember he was telling us about that, blah, 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 versus just rambling on about something. So anyway. All right. So our next question. How has the need for unique identity changed? I think it's gotten more and more and more and more and more important. If you can't identify an entity, and I'm not a cybersecurity specialist by any means, but I really believe that you can't have proper cybersecurity or any kind of security technologically if you don't have data management behind the scenes because mm -hmm. all these things can just get away from you very quickly. So uniquely identifying something, disambiguating it, validating its existence is the start, is the key. Mm -hmm. when, when you look at big data, people talk about all the value you can get out of big data. Big data is inherently unstructured. You've got to structure that data to get some kind of value out of it. And structuring it is usually done around the identity of things like customers, mm -hmm. partners products, services, all these foundational nouns of the business as they're often referred to are what the rest of the data is about. I like mm -hmm. to think of it as, uh, you think about a really fancy data visualization technique these days, let's call it a table, all right? Mm -hmm. Most people can understand a table, rows and columns. A lot of the focus and a lot of the value is pointed at the columns of data. Here's a KPI, here's a value, here's a, some sort of metric, but the columns are about the rows and the rows are what drives your business. The rows are customers, identities, mm -hmm. people, consumers, patients, whatever you happen to call relationships, you can boil it all down to, they are all relationships and every mm -hmm. business out there has relationships and you've got to identify who those relationships are if you want to do anything with them. So it's mm -hmm. where you start. Does this thing exist? Can I trust it? Do I have it already? Is it trying to deceive me? These are questions you have to answer first before you get into what kind of promotion should we give it or mm -hmm. how do we incentivize it or what's its you know preferences? Again, not chicken mm -hmm. or egg, egg and omelet here. Today, almost everything is connected to the internet. If it's connected, it should be protected. Capilon is the easy button for privacy and security protection from privacy violators and cyber threats for both homes and small businesses. Set up Cavalon in less than five minutes. There's no software to install, no devices to buy. Easy, affordable, reliable, and comprehensive privacy and security protection. Protect every device from hackers and phishing emails and protect everyone's privacy from big tech companies and spying apps. To find out how to protect your home and small business, please visit getcavalon.com. Love the egg and omelet. Okay. <laughs> Master data is a main focus area of your content. And why is it still relevant? First of all, why don't you explain to us what that means, the term master data, just so people can follow this along. I've been referring to it throughout this. So master data often referred to as the nouns of the business. So those core entities that every business has, products, services, brands, consumers, relationships of any type, assets, locations, things the things and people and places that that you have data on. I believe master data is the most important data any organization has because it's about what the business is about. A lot of the work in analytics and business intelligence is attaching and enriching and enhancing and trying to understand those master data entities as they're called. But every business has master data and it's been around since there was data, the list of customers, a list of suppliers, our product inventory. If you're looking at something as simple as how are our sales doing? A sale is a transaction. A transaction is made up of a customer and a product and the time and the place and the price and all that. But if you don't have that customer well-defined, as we've already said, and you don't have that product structured well, then your transactional information isn't going to serve the purpose it needs to. And that ends up with your C-level looking at reports that don't match. Mm -hmm. your, your 
sales and marketing and finance and operations people all trying to figure out what they mean by customer and they all have different definitions. So master data and MDM, master data management, helps establish a standard for an organization and it is often called the foundational data for an organization. Well, and that, like you just mentioned, that's obviously very, very important because if you have sales doing what, looking at one thing, marketing looking at another thing, for the finance department looking at another thing, and they're looking at different things, you can't really, where are you going with that? I mean, you're right. It has to start with everybody looking at the same thing. And then it's a common language. And it's another way to think about it. standards, mm -hmm. common language, those kinds of ways to talk mm -hmm. about it to, to the organization reinforces the importance, I believe. All right. So here's another thing. So speaking of technology, so can't advances in technology, data architecture and data science, all that techie stuff replace the need for data management? They wish. That's what I say. They wish they could. But it's it's no, no, it, it, it can't. And I'll just say it. People always say, well, never say never. I'll say it never can because you still need the content. Those things are act approaches. Think of it as going back to my egg and omelet example here. Let's stick with cooking just because you have a good frying pan that you bought. What's called data science uh, 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 is a cook or a certain type of data architecture is a way you're measuring ingredients or certain type of technology is a new frying pan or ninja foodie or whatever appliance you just bought. If you're a great cook and you've got spectacular equipment, if the quality of your ingredients suck, then your meal is going to be terrible. So we're not saying one is more important than the other, but we are saying they are all important. And until you have all three, the right ingredients through data, the right equipment through technology, and the right cook through analytics and business intelligence and data science, you're not going to be able to serve the proper meal to the business so they can satisfy their appetite for growth, improvement, and mitigating risk. You want me to keep going? I can just, you can revoke well, my poetic license anytime you want to. No, that that's a good the food thing is that, that's a good analogy because people can really really relate to that like oh i'm an amazing chef i have the, the best equipment and like you said if you have crappy ingredients where are you going with that nowhere exactly yeah all right so now here the most important thing i think at the end of the day well not the most important but one of the most important things is talking to non-technical people about this so when you're explaining these things to the c-suite how do you explain these concepts to them the and that's all I do. All I do is help people explain this stuff to the C-suite. I wrote a whole book about it. Telling your data story, data storytelling for data management. It says right on there, 99% buzzword free. So that's I don't important. want to overpromise. But most non-technical people don't care about how you're doing it. They care about why it's important. So you must focus on why what you're going to do with data is going to enable the strategic intentions of your enterprise. Why working with data and using it in whatever way you're presenting is going to help the company get to where it needs to go versus how you're going to get it done. And technologists love to explain their methodology. They love to talk about this new architecture or this new API configuration or, oh, we figured out this new analytics graph hub fabric mesh. And it doesn't play with the C-suite. They don't care. If they care about how, then you've already sold it. Mm -hmm. You do have to do the how. I'm not suggesting you don't. It has to be balanced, however, and start with why it's important. Mm hmm because that they can understand, right? And I think that is that is very similar when it comes to cybersecurity and talking to the C-suite because it gets very overcomplicated very quickly and then you can lose them. And then they're like, oh, I don't even have time for this. I don't want yeah, to yeah. Then the, then the question they ask is, why are you even in this meeting? You don't want that, you know, <laughs> right. that no. question. So no, 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 you no, got to no. focus on the business rationale. And it's hard because those are soft skills. Mm -hmm. And inherently in the data space, people train on the hard skills, on the technical mm -hmm. aspects, on making sure they can manage and munge and wrangle and analyze that data mm -hmm. but if you come from the soft skill side you got to bone up on that i mean i'm pure soft skills that's all i do is, you know help people talk about it so you're obviously very helpful in this space so where can people where can they get in touch with you how can they find you I'm all over LinkedIn. You can find me, yeah. Scott Daly, the Data Whisperer. I've got a YouTube channel, not quite as healthy as yours, but I'm, I'm getting there where I've got a bunch of videos and I do a tremendous number of events and shows with data brands in one way or the other. But LinkedIn is probably the best place to start. 
and mm-hmm. I put everything I've got out there, whether it's the puppet shows or reading my grandson a mm-hmm. book, storybook about the importance of proper data. Mm-hmm. But I'm always trying to lean on, as you do, Dana, I really love your stuff. On the entertaining side, on kind of the storytelling side, can you make somebody laugh or smile or think differently mm-hmm. about something? Then you're breaking through. And I think that's what we're both trying to do is kind of break through the noise to get a very simple but important message out there. Yes, absolutely. We're both trying to do the exact same thing. Well, you do a great job. And I really hope that people do go check out your stuff because, I mean, I I am very partial to the puppets. I think they're hysterical. But a lot of the stuff you do is really, really good, too. So not just just the puppets. But thank you very, very much for your time on all this, Scott. I really appreciate it. And hopefully we'll have you back again and you can tell us some more about the importance of data. I'd love to. Thanks for having me, for sure. All right, everybody. Well, thank you very much for tuning in and we'll see you on the next episode. Bye-bye.